And that ends my demonstration of a partial rebreathing mask. Now I'm going to show you a non-rebreathing mask. It's hooked up to the oxygen source the same way, and it's placed on the patient the same way. So I won't demonstrate those again. What I want to focus on is showing you the difference between the partial rebreathing mask and the non-rebreathing mask. As I said before, in the partial rebreathing mask, there's no valve here. However, with the non-rebreathing mask, there is a valve. What this valve does is it prevents exhaled air from the patient from going back into the bag and mixing with the oxygen. So with this mask, because exhaled air can go back into the bag, you have a mixture of the oxygen and carbon dioxide. However, with this system, this bag is going to contain oxygen. So the patient, when they inhale, is going to be receiving a higher percentage of oxygen. This oxygen delivery device can deliver anywhere between 60 and you may read up to 100 percent of oxygen to the patient. However, with any type of a mask system, it's difficult to achieve 100 percent of oxygen delivery to the patient. Another difference with this mask is that on the side you will see one of these flaps, these rubber flaps. You probably will not see another one on the other side and here's why. If something should happen to the oxygen source where it's kinked, the tubing is kinked under the patient or in the bed or it disconnects from the oxygen source and they are no longer receiving oxygen and if there were two rubber flaps on here, if this was a tight, properly tight seal on the patient's face, when the patient inhales and no oxygen is coming in through its only source, which would be the bag, these two flaps, as the patient inhales, will push against the mask and it will not allow room air to enter the mask. So this is a very, very important safety feature that on a non-rebreathing mask that has the valve in here, that only one port has the rubber flap on it. So in summary, this device, for example, set at between six liters on the flow meter per minute up to the highest that the flow meter can go, which is 15, from six to 15, this can deliver anywhere from 60% up to possibly 100% oxygen to the patient. And again, it's measured by how much oxygen is actually being delivered by a respiratory therapist, and then the respiratory therapist will adjust the flow meter accordingly to make sure that the proper amount of oxygen is being delivered. And that ends the demonstration of a non-rebreathing mask. I also wanted to show you very quickly an oxygen delivery device called a tray collar. And you will see these on a medical floor. This is not necessarily just for a critical care unit because many patients have trachs. This is a trach, and you may see this patient on your floor. And to deliver oxygen to this patient, because this trach is now going directly into the lungs, you'll see a mask like this around the patient and directly over the trach and then the end of this tubing will be hooked up to the flow meter and you will set the flow meter according to the liters per minute ordered by the physician or advanced practice nurse. The next type of oxygen delivery device I want to show you is what's called a Venturi mask. The purpose of this mask is to deliver a very exact amount of oxygen. If you recall what I said about the other oxygen delivery devices, the amount of oxygen delivered is a range depending on the rate and depth of the patient's breathing and the amount of oxygen delivered from the flow meter. However, there's a certain 
clientele, patients that have obstructive lung disease, such as emphysema, where in those patients, what drives them to breathe is low oxygen levels in the blood. That differs from a patient that does not have obstructive lung disease in that in a normal patient, what drives that patient to breathe is higher levels of carbon dioxide. So it's very important in a patient with obstructive lung disease that you do not deliver too much oxygen because you run the risk of decreasing their respiratory drive, their drive to breathe. So on this particular type, you can see this is an example where the exact leader flow by turning this dial, not by the flow meter, corresponds to an exact amount of oxygen delivered and it's controlled through how this device works internally versus having this mask hooked up directly only to the flow meter. You have this extra piece that will act as a device to give you the exact flow of oxygen to the patient. And this is put on the patient the same way as the other masks and it's hooked up to the oxygen source in the same way. And that ends my demonstration on a Venturi mask. Hi, my name is Gina Luciano and I'm going to demonstrate today the bag valve mask. The first thing you want to do is turn your oxygen flow meter on the wall flush all the way up to 15 liters per minute. Make sure your oxygen is flowing and hook up your source. When you hook it up, you should see oxygen flowing in your reservoir bag. Once you have oxygen flowing, you want to stand behind the patient at the head of the bed, have the bed at waist height. You want to have your patient's head tilted, remove the pillow, and you want to push their mandible forward to open their airway and move the tongue away from the airway. When you apply the mask, you want to apply the apex of the mask over the patient's nose and the base of the mask at the patient's chin. You want to form a tight seal keeping the jaw extended and push on the mask to get a tight seal so that oxygen doesn't flow away from the mask. You want to deliver one breath every five seconds for a rate of 12 per minute and if the patient's breathing, you want to do this with the patient's own respirations. If the patient is not breathing, then you would do just one breath every five seconds. You'll squeeze this bag and release to deliver oxygen to the patient, keeping a tight seal on the patient's face. And that concludes our demonstration of bag valve mask.